Okay, so we'll start talking about the feminist movement in South Korea. Can you mm-hmm. please talk a little bit about uh, Meghalaya? Yes, Meghalaya was the beginning of our new online feminist movement that started in uh, 2015. So in 2015, there was the MERS uh, pandemic. Do you remember that? The MERS virus. Yeah, it was not as serious as uh, this COVID-19, but Korean men uh, blamed uh, Korean women um, for the spread of the virus in Korea. And uh, there was a news in which, uh, news article that uh, some Korean women refused to be tested Uh, for MERS after traveling abroad. But it turned out it was a fake news to blame women for this pandemic. So uh, Korean women got furious and uh, women started fighting back against men uh, using rough language or mockery, satire. Many women felt liberating uh, being able to fight back uh, this uh, misogynistic online culture that prevailed in Korea. Uh, For example, women started calling Korean men (laughs) 6.9 to mark their uh, small penis size. Also, men's habit of commenting on women's body sizes. So 6.9 centimeter is Korean men's average uh, penis size and it's one of the smallest in the world. (laughs) So uh, this satire or parody gave women much delight and opportunity to look into deep-rooted misogynistic culture. Uh, Because misogyny is so intertwined with our culture and consciousness of people, it is not easy to notice. Uh, When you put a man in woman's position of being subjugated or objectified, you get to see the unjustness uh, through different eyes. So that's the origin of uh, the online movement. It came as a response to men accusing women of spreading the virus back in 2015. Mm -hmm. One of the tactics they used was uh, sharing target and pouring out comments together onto major news articles. Because they use, men use degrading, sexually offensive words, women couldn't speak up against, against these behaviors before, but after 2015, when a woman discovered a news article with misogynistic comments below it, she shared this target in women-only spaces. And then women together poured out criticism against these comments. Mm. Uh, We call this uh, all-out attack. So we set a target and we go together to attack this man. And sometimes we do hashtag attack to to make important feminist issues uh, more visible Mm -hmm. to the public. But when women started online feminist movement, these spaces were very useful to Mm -hmm. spread feminist ideas among lay women. You had many campaigns, you had run rallies, uh, you took to the road to protest against things with the government. Could you talk a little bit about the successful campaigns? Yeah, we had uh, big rallies in 2018 against against spy cam. Uh, spy cam was a very serious uh, problem uh, in Korea and women felt unsafe to use public restrooms because it was reported that in many restrooms, uh, public restrooms, uh, men installed a tiny uh, spy cam and they shared these footages and pictures 
uh, on porn sites. Mm. Even though we made many complaints to the police about this issue, um, the police uh, didn't investigate these cases very actively. There was this uh, case in 2018 where a male nude model, his naked picture was taken by a female uh, nude model and it was uploaded uh, on the website, women only website. But, uh, but then uh, police, it took only two or three days for the police to catch this woman. So it was a very swift investigation and she was treated as a like a felony. Her face was exposed uh, to the media and so this unfair treatment uh, of the cases uh, enraged women. Women organized this rally uh, in uh, early 2018 and it gathered a lot of women uh, to the streets from all over the country. Mm. And it was women only really. So the organizers uh, publicly said uh, this is women only really. So mm. only biological female can attend. We had like uh, six rallies in total in mm. 2018 and it gathered like um, 350,000 women in total. <laughs> so yeah, it was a big scene on the news media too. Mm. And we also had other rallies against sex dolls because um, the court ruled it's legal to sell sex dolls in Korea. So we did uh, rallies against it and also rape drugs. It was very easy to buy rape drugs online and mm. also for abortion rights. What is the verdict right now with regards to the spy cam situation in uh, South Korea? Not very satisfactory, <laughs> unfortunately, but uh, we made some new changes uh, in the law. So the punishment uh, for the perpetrators uh, uh, became a little tightened. Uh, we had a success with the abortion rights mm. last year. The uh, constitutional uh, court ruled it unconstitutional uh, mm. to ban abortion. Until last year, it was illegal to get an abortion. Uh, the thing is, it, it has always been illegal, illegal in Korea. But, you know, after the Korean War, we had huge baby boom and we had, uh, we had too big population. So government actually encouraged women to get abortion. So they didn't prosecute women or doctors at all. And the sad thing is, uh, since men, since men refused to use condoms men in many cases, so getting abortion was a kind of uh, birth control for many women. So it was not unusual for housewives to get several abortions during her lifetime. But when Korea started having very low birth rate, government started prosecuting uh, women who seek abortion. I think it, it started in 2009 yeah, so our protest against the 
ban on abortion has been going on for over 10 years, but since the new emergence of online feminist mass movement it was more easy to make this abortion right a uh, bigger issue in the society. Mm -hmm. exactly. Basically, the woman has no choice in that matter. They were not advocating that men use contraception or persecuting the men in any way. No, no. Can you please talk about um, the formation of the Women's Party in South Korea and what were the challenges so bringing all those women together? Did you have differences of opinion within yourself? Because that's also something that's very possible, right? The Women's Party was created uh, in March and our general parliamentary election was in April. So within just one month, they were able to gather like um, 10,000 party members. But this was not um, possible without uh, the new emergent online feminist movement. So some senior feminist activists and online feminists joined together to set up the party because mm -hmm. uh, in Korea, Congress women only comprise 19% uh, of MPs, so it's very low. Uh, we need to get more Congress women. We need to elect more Congress women. But um, uh, thanks to this mass online movement, we were able to get more women get involved in this women's party. Uh, unfortunately, Women's Party failed to secure a seat in the parliament, but they succeeded in making women's agenda prominent, more prominent during the campaign. Mm. And they earned uh, 200,000 votes, which mm. is, I think, very significant considering their short period of campaign. Our success in creating this online feminist movement is being separatist. Separatism, I think it's a very important principle. Some people misunderstand separatism as... Uh, Man-hating or anti man Yes, yes. but uh, we are entitled to hate men because we are discriminated and we get abused. I honestly haven't met a woman who has not experienced sexual violence in any form in her life. So uh, when we are separatists, when we have the principle, um, we can encourage, we can actually reach out to more women. Another important thing is to ditch political correctness. Uh, people always expect feminists to be polite and politically correct in their argument, in their campaign. Uh, but uh, uh, we, we cannot effectively raise consciousness of women that way. Okay? And we need to we need to be able to express our anger towards mm. men more freely, at least among women in separatist spaces. This online feminist movement we have now, it has more base in younger generation of women because I think they are uh, more familiar to, uh, with uh, using online communities and getting access to these materials. Various women participating in this movement. Uh, it's just not just women in their 20s or college students. Mm -hmm. They are a big portion of the movement, but uh, they are not all. What was the Women's Party promising for its voters? Uh, they focused on 
digital sexual violence. You heard about the uh, bathroom cases mm. and burning sun scandals, all kinds of uh, new forms of violence happening online, made using smartphones and chat rooms mm. to blackmail mm. women to share their private pictures, naked pictures, and mm. men, men are making profit from this sexual violence. Uh, this uh, issue has not dealt with enough before. So mm. Women's Party focused uh, on this issue and even though they fail to uh, earn seats in the parliament, uh, they uh, succeeded in making this issue more visible during mm. the campaign. So after the election, so in the election, the Democratic Party uh, won the election. And mm. uh, our Democratic Party is uh, very quite similar to the Democratic Party in US. After winning the election, uh, they appointed a female minister for the Ministry of Justice. Mm -hmm. And uh, she promptly uh, passed the government, passed uh, a few laws, mm. uh, new legislations about uh, violence against women. Creating party uh, is just a part part of the women's movement. It's uh, not all that we should pursue because uh, when women's movement is uh, stronger and when it's strong enough. Uh, the politicians and MPs listen more carefully to what we say, what we argue. So I think building a stronger movement, mass movement, is more important. The formation of Women's Party is just one of the element of the South Korean women's movement. Yes. The women's yes. movement. Yes. Okay. What are the current, uh, you know, status of women's sex-based rights? With we talked about abortions, I know, but uh, what about homosexuality and, uh, you know, uh, inheritance, land rights? What What are the different sex-based rights that women have at the moment? After being emancipated from Japanese um, colonizations uh, in nineteen. 45, uh, we earned the right to vote. Uh, after the Korean War, we earned it. And the right to get equal education was very important in the period after the Korean War. And I think in 1980, we got the same uh, opportunity to get educated in public uh, educator, edu education system. So the interesting thing is uh, more women go to colleges, universities than men do now mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, Korean people in general uh, consider education very important. So um, children um, from their childhood get very competitive in schools. And, you know, female students study harder usually than male students, so they are getting more high, higher education now than before, be, uh, 
uh, than their former generation of women. But they are um, very much discri discriminated in the job market. And sexual harassment in the workplace is also very serious. After college, after getting education, it's totally different reality for women. Because of the economy uh, status in Korea, women are expected to earn a living as well. They are also expected to take care of all the housework. <laughs> Yeah, so it's double burden for them. Is there something similar to division, except say class? Class is a universal concept, but is there any other division? We are very ubiquitous uh, right. in terms of ethnicity, language, culture, sex, and class. Mm. Are the is only the two major things. yeah Asian fetish that sort of men look up. In, the, in the searches and everything. Can you talk a little bit about that? How influenced are men by pornography? Well, it has always been illegal to produce or distribute porn. Korean men have had access to overseas porn through you know, high-speed internet and smartphones and also uh, Within this country, they approach vulnerable women and girls to and make them send them the naked pictures and they sell these pictures or videos through Telegram or other uh, internet platforms to other men. Men move from one platform to another to share porn among men. Uh, so there was this big website called Soranet, uh, where men shared all kinds of porn materials, and they even plotted gang rape on the website. So Korean women reported this website to the police numerous times, but police always said they cannot do much because the website suburb is based overseas but they can they can do but they don't so uh, after uh, uh, the emergence of uh, feminist movement and more women asked for uh, the solution to shut down this website the police finally shut down the website in 2016 but there emerged other similar websites yeah. and they change their web address every time they are caught by the police and they share this new address through uh, social media like Twitter. Mm. So if men follow their Twitter account, they can always get access to the new address. After the Soranet or uh, similar kinds of websites, they used uh, file sharing, file sharing programs uh, like P2P. Mm -hmm. And after police started investigating these websites, men moved onto Telegram, as in the nth room cases. It is estimated at least uh, 260,000 men use these chat rooms in Telegram and at least 74 women were tricked or blackmailed into sharing their pictures. And some men even paid um, $1,200 to enter a high-ranked chat rooms where there are more violent images and videos. So I think we need to create zero tolerance culture about porn instead of focusing, uh, shutting down one website. It's important to close actual 
places, online places, where men these horrible things. Japanese porn culture, I think, is uh, very much affecting Korean men's uh, sexuality and their sexual behavior. It's also affecting our uh, pop culture. This is a picture of a TV program called Produce 101. Uh, it's an uh, audition program. Mm. This image is a very common theme in Japanese porn. They are very sexualized in this way. And the male director of this program said in an win- interview that he, he wants this program to uh, feel like a porn of schoolgirls. So it okay. became a big issue because he said it publicly. The upper, upper picture mm-hmm. is from um, Japanese AV, the adult video. The uh, downside, the left side, the picture is uh, Japanese entertainment TV program. So they are giving girls flu shots, flu shots. Mm. And the right side, the two pictures are from our TV shows, mm. like uh, the audition programs, the produce 111. It's mm. the same theme and structure. They give girls uh, flu shots and cause pain, and they capture uh, their Okay, so that brings me to the question of uh, pedophilia. How Mm. rampant is it in uh, South Korea? Because, um, you know, there's an influence of uh, mangas and animes in which girls are portrayed to have really large breasts, but they wear school uniform. And Although uh, although it's illegal to uh, share uh, mangas that uh, depict genitals, uh, except that anything is legal for adults to consume. You cannot share uh, videos of actual uh, minors. It's illegal according to the youth protection law. Mm. But it's not difficult to man to get access to those kind of materials. And even toddlers and small female children, they are dressed in a very sexual way. Mm. And and especially when we see um, advertisements of children's clothing, female children are wearing makeup, and they are posing um, like an adult. I briefly talked about the consent age before, mm. and it was until very recently, it was 13. It was too low. In many cases, uh, you know, men groom little girls uh, and female adolescents into having sex with them. and. But they argue it was consensual. Uh, With the consent age to law, uh, it was very difficult for victims to prove that it was not consensual. Uh, We raised it to 16. (laughs) It's still not high enough, but, uh, but still, it's still a controversy among feminists, especially liberal feminists, because liberal feminists argue that this uh, statutory rape law harms adolescents' right to have sex. (laughs) (laughs) Liberal feminism dominates uh, established 
women's organizations, academia. Mm. Place, I was going to ask you about the children that get trafficked from other parts of the world into South Korea. Say, for example, from North Korea when uh, they are they are running away or they are abducted or they are looked at as you know young fresh meat as they call it, and they are put into the porn or the prostitution industry. Uh, in in South Korea, where there is so much demand for, you know, um, such such a such an such an industry. Prostitution has been always illegal in Korea, but uh, 2004, when the law when we passed new law on prostitution, the men who buy sex were rarely prosecuted, and they. The government only prosecuted women in the name of rehabilitating them. They locked them up and it was required for women to get regular medical checkups. In 2002, there were two big fire accidents um, in brothels and women, in total 19 women died because they couldn't escape because they were locked up. These two fire accidents um, alarmed the society, mm. thankfully, and we had new legislation. And situations are slowly getting better, but we still have uh, many problems. Still, Korean men uh, according to statistics, uh, half of Korean men uh, have had uh, the experience of buying, like paying for sex. sex. Yeah. And there is no way to find out if these are trafficked women or no way to find out what their age is, whether they are minors, because uh, they are undocumented. The major uh, percentage Majority of these uh, prostituted women are Koreans, but uh, the percentage of trafficked women from abroad is increasing. Mm. And from, especially from Philippines and, you know, China and possibly North Korea through China and also from Russia. They are mostly undocumented. Yeah, right? most of them are not documented. For say a North Korean woman who got traffic gets killed by a man, there is no way for her to claim anything or prove anything because yeah, she's it's undocumented. Very, yeah, difficult for them. And uh, because we don't have the uh, visa for victims of trafficking, women uh, choose not to report mm. um, the abuse and uh, violence by pimps and buyers. Uh, I work with many Filipino women mm. in prostitution in clubs, and it was very difficult to persuade them to testify um, to the police about their experience and police doesn't actively uh, investigate these uh, crimes. They don't consider these crimes because we don't have uh, big, uh, visas for traffic victims. We instead use visa uh, for foreigners who have legal issues. So when foreigners have legal issues, legal cases, that's going on, uh, they can stay until the case is, is finalized in the court. Mm -hmm. So we apply for the visa, for that visa and um, try to extend it. Mm -hmm. uh, but after the case is ended, uh, she has to leave and, and that's not good. Yeah. Our organization in Busan uh, had job training center and Filipino women worked there 
with mm. other Korean women um, together. And there are other organizations as well in other areas of Korea uh, who provide services for trafficked victims. Uh, what is the situation with, regard, with regards to self-ID? So our country doesn't have a specific law on legal sex change. Uh, the Supreme Court made a guideline for it on their own. Uh, and most judges follow this guideline that specifies requirements for legal sex change. They usually require genital surgery and having had uh, experience of living as the other sex for a year or two. And sometimes letters from their friends or family members supporting their transition and so on. But it's just a guideline. Um, it's not uh, legally binding. So we have seen cases where judges allow people to change their legal sex status without uh, genital surgery. So it's getting loose. Uh, and this means they can have it changed in all the legal documents, which means they can have access to all the female-only spaces as well. Yes, yes. So we had two uh, big cases this year regarding this. A male uh, staff surgeon, a professional soldier, uh, had sex change operation in Thailand last year why on leave and after uh, when he came back to Korea he was referred to the military panel to determine whether uh, to discharge him mm. due to his surgery and the army announced uh, that they decided to dismiss him on the ground that he is unfit to continue to serve as a soldier due to physical injuries, according to the military law. He held a, a press, press conference with a gay advocate organization, and he said he wishes to keep serving as a female soldier. He, he's already discharged and he's saying he's going to sue this decision. Another case, after this case, who had the genital surgery in Thailand as well, he changed his uh, legal sex status to female and he applied to a woman's uh, women's university and he got accepted. Motivated by this soldier's case, he got more courage to talk publicly, publicly about uh, his case. And this made a huge news uh, controversy in Korea and female students in women's universities uh, got enraged uh, because he's a man, he cannot, he shouldn't be allowed in women's universities. So uh, like 23 feminist groups in six women's universities gathered signatures uh, on their opposition and state, um, on their statement against uh, this, uh, they gathered like, yeah, 10,000 signatures just within a day. Uh, eventually, this man withdrew his admission and did, did not enroll um, the college. He got accepted because he said he got scared uh, seeing all this fierce opposition. He got uh, much sympathy from liberal feminists and 
LGBT groups. So is, is, is there any means to sort of reach out to the younger generation in telling them about uh, sex-based rights and sexual stereotypes and the difference between uh, you know, sexual identity, gender representation. There is no like uh, official approach of the kind yet, but um, since the strong online feminist movement emerged, that uh, what they did also is um, uh, examining sex roles hmm. and. They also analyze male, male practice of transgenderism and cross-dressing. Mm. Uh, they dig up uh, many online materials posted by cross-dressers and transgenders in their own online communities. And they, women concluded uh, transgenderism is uh, another misogyny because we analyze uh, sex roles and gender in a radical feminist uh, perspective. Uh, we created this uh, movement like uh, anti-corset movement or the corset movement, which mm. is which, uh, uh, which is encouraging women to teach beauty practice like a skirt, uh, long hair, makeup, things like that. Is it, uh, think, it also an offshoot of uh, that movement where a Korean woman completely decided to not marry, not have children, not have sex? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all connected. The, it's ah. called the phobia movement, like rejecting, um, associating with male sexually. Uh, that movement, uh, most of the participants of the movement is practicing anti-corset. I think this uh, rejection of gender sex roles among women is creating safe environment uh, where women can accept their bodies uh, as it is. Uh, it's naturally. Although liberal feminists and progressive uh, organizations are all uh, advocating transgender rights, uh, I think uh, general female population's opinions are more on our side. Last year, published uh, this book, Gender Hurts by <laughs> Shula Jeffries in Korean translation. And we invited uh, Shula oh. Jeffries to Korea and had events. And we had 500 women who came to the lecture. And it was all women-only events. And we printed out the Declaration, declaration on yeah, women's sex based rights, and we are dis distributing this mm. booklet to women. Uh, since uh, we have a uh, very big uh, base of radical feminists uh, in Korea, uh, we didn't have much. Uh, problem like a text from liberals and trans activists uh, in those events. Yeah. And from my experience, what I realized is, is uh, I don't have much hope for uh, liberal feminists like scholars, activists who are already seasoned in the logics of liberal feminism. And it's very difficult for them to overcome it. So I think it's more effective when we assess uh, lay women who hasn't been exposed to harmful feminism. Harmful
kind of feminism. Mm-hmm.